Hey folks, welcome back to the Reclaim Your Domain web series. Uh, you'll remember in the last video, we got this awesome looking website started. So we are moving right along. We've got our domain registered, we've got our account set up, and we even managed to throw up a little fancy website here. But we haven't really dug into much in terms of like what's on the server or how it all works. Of course, we used a new feature of cPanel called Site Publisher to put up this simple site. But uh, in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about like what's actually happening, like where these files actually live, uh, and how does that all work when you have this little slice of a server space on reclaim hosting uh, so I'm gonna flip over here back to our client area and I'm gonna go into cPanel the cPanel I've referenced a few times before of course this is where that site publisher feature is and it's really where you're gonna manage your domain uh, and they've got a functionality in here called the file manager um, we've got a link to it up top here but it's also here under the files area and I'm gonna go in here and just talk a little bit about like what that folder structure looks like uh, on the server now you'll notice there's several folders in here. We've got a sidebar on the left and we can sort of navigate all those folders. We can also move around on the right hand side here just by double clicking folders and it'll open those up. Um, so uh, you'll notice at the top here, I've got the main folder that I'm in, which is slash home slash T-O-N-Z-N-E. It's just the first eight characters of the domain name, T-O-N-Z.net. Uh, and this is usually what happens by default. This is sort of your root folder. It's not necessarily like this main folder, if I open this up, you'll see all of these folders inside of it. If I, You'll notice there aren't really any HTML files in here. This is not where your website is being served up from. These are folders uh, that cPanel uses to store things like email, uh, like logs for the system and stuff like that. Your actual website is going to be stored in this folder, public underscore HTML, and they handily make it a nice little globe icon there so you know, like, this is your internet folder, right? This is where the actual files for your website are being stored. So if you're trying to upload an image that you want to be able to send a link to to someone, uh, it's actually going to go in this public underscore HTML folder. Other ones in here, as I mentioned, uh, we've got stuff that are logs for the website, uh, email, if I had any email addresses, they'd be stored in there, uh, along with all the email contents. There's not a whole lot of reason to go into all these other files and folders. Uh, the main one you're gonna be working with, like I said, is that public underscore HTML folder. And if I open it up, sure enough, we'll see in there some HTML files, uh, some folders that have things like images, fonts, uh, CSS style sheets, and things like that. So uh, this is essentially when we use that site publisher feature, it dropped a bunch of those files in there to make that website show up that we see right there. So I could actually go in right in here and move things around, edit, delete them, create new files and folders. You'll notice there's a menu up top here and you can do a lot of stuff in here. Now, you know, this isn't gonna be a full on editor in the same way as something like Dreamweaver or Adobe Muse. Uh, you know, this is really gonna be for making very basic changes to your site as well as seeing what's in your account. You know, where are the folders? Where are the files? If I need to upload one or two files, this is a great way to do it. Um, there are better ways to handle multiple files, which We'll get into using things like FTP clients in a later video. Um, but I'm going to open up this index file. So to tell you really quickly, uh, index is basically a way for the server to know this is the file that I want to show up when people go to your website. Uh, and it's named index.html here. And if I edit this, I'm going to use their code editor just because it'll make it a little bit easier. Hit edit. And you'll notice that this is using a template called Arial by HTML5 Up. Um, that's essentially the template that you're seeing right here. It's a website that provides HTML5 templates. Uh, and this is the code that essentially is turning it into that fancy looking website that we saw previously. And I could go in here and make modifications if I wanted to. Of course, I can use the site publisher to edit the areas in that uh, form that we wanted to edit. But here you could get a lot more granular. I could add more content or, you know, if I was comfortable doing so. Let's say, for example, I wanted to change the title of this page. And the title is what shows up up in the tab up here. So you'll see it's just my name, Tim Owens. Uh, you know, when people click on it, they'll see it. Um, Google uses that for Google search results. If I wanted to change the title, it's up near the top of the file up here between these title tags. Uh, and maybe I want to keep my name in here, but I also want to put Tim Owens, comma, reclaim hosting. So I'll make that change in here, and then I'll go up here and hit save changes. Now, if I refresh the page, you'll see that that tab has changed now. And so that 
that's the title of the page. So you can make minor edits to files right here within the file manager and it totally works. Um, it's kind of easy to use. Um, if you needed to delete certain files, uh, old files that are in here or folders, you could do that as well. Like I said, you can move things around. You can even upload contents in here. If you hit the upload button, they allow you to drag and drop uh, files within here and do that. Like I said, it's not going to be great for a ton of stuff that you need to edit. Um, if you need to really do a whole lot of, you know, upload a whole folder full of files, this is not going to be the best way to do it. Uh, but it is a great, you know, quick option for you to really see what's going on within your account. The other thing that I want to talk about is really the folder structure and how it relates to URLs on the web. So of course I mentioned this public underscore HTML folder. That's what's showing up when people go to tons.net. Well what if I wanted them to be able to go to like tons.net slash about? Well right now nothing's there. We get what's called a 404 error and it basically says yeah there is no about page on this website. There's so a couple things that I could do here. Of course, I could create an HTML5 document here. Let's say I did like about.html. And I'll put it in this folder. Now one would think like with a file like that in there, now I should be able to go to this website, right? Well, I just refreshed and I still get a 404. Why was that happening? Because this is an HTML file and not necessarily a folder, I actually need to type the full name here, so about.html. And if I open that up, of course it's empty right now. Let's put some oops, let's let's put some content in there real quick. So I'm gonna edit this. And I'll just put something like about Tim. Put it in between a um, H1 tag, which is basically the biggest header that you can have, uh, and refresh. So there's my content in there. It's nothing fancy, but of course somebody would have to really, you know, I'd have to either be linking to this or pass that URL on to someone. What if I want it to not have to put the .html at the end of it? Well, what you do in that case is about needs to be a folder, not a file, so that nobody has to type anything afterwards. Uh, so if I go back here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name it about. And now I'm going to take that about.html file and I'm gonna actually move it into the about folder. Now, I do need to rename this. If I go into the about folder, remember what I said previously that you need to have the file named index.html in order for the server to know, oh, I should just load that page by default. Um, so if it was left like this, then this still isn't gonna work. If people go to about, they're gonna get a listing of the files in there. What I want the server to say is, oh, I know what to do with that file automatically. And now if I go here and refresh the page, it will automatically load that index file. So now people can just go to tons.net slash about. They don't have to type anything extra afterwards, no .html or anything like that. And it automatically loads. So I could go up here and create folders for all the different pages that I wanted, put index files inside of them, and put the content that I wanted in there. Of course, you may end up using something like WordPress or Omeka or some other piece of software that does a lot of this stuff for you. So you won't necessarily be editing HTML files and folders, but I do want you to understand how the URL structure works. So anything that comes after the URL like this, these are the folder names. Uh, if you have a folder inside there, and this is case sensitive, so if you have a capitalization in there, you're gonna have to put it in the URL. Um, we usually recommend no spaces, all lowercase, just keep it simple. The other thing that you can do with URLs that I'll touch on in this video is what's called subdomains. So these are called subfolders. Subfolders just mean it comes after the URL. What if I wanted something like about.tons.net? Well, right now that doesn't exist. The server would actually throw an error if I tried to go there. But what if I want that to exist? Well, you can definitely do that. Um, you're not gonna do this in the file manager. What you need to do is go here to the main cPanel area. And under the domains section, there's a section for subdomains. And so you can see you get to create whatever you want to come before the URL. In this case, I'm just going to say about. And then when you set what's called a document root, and this is going to be what folder do you want to show up when someone goes to that subdomain. Uh, it could just be the main public underscore HTML folder. Uh, in this case, I actually already have that about folder, and I want to use that one. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up.
there we go. And now I've got that subdomain created. So I can actually copy this here and I'm going to open it in a browser and that same about page opens up. We had already set up the folder. We had that index file inside of it, but now nobody, uh, you know, they can go to about.tons.net to go there. This is entirely aesthetic. So it's totally up to you whether you want to use subdomains or subfolders. You can see from the standpoint of how it shows up on the server, nothing has changed here. If I didn't have this folder when I created that subdomain, cPanel would have created it for me. Um, in this case, I already had one, so I just pointed to the one that already existed. Um, so everything still shows up in my public underscore HTML folder, but I have a little bit more control over what those URLs look like on the website. Uh, in future videos, we're going to talk about moving beyond HTML and dive into things like WordPress and Omeka and how we can use software to really make our lives a little bit easier in this regard. Um, but knowing how folders and files are managed on the server I think is really useful. And we'll also touch in a future video on using a program like an FTP client, FileZilla or CyberDuck or something like that. If you've got a whole folder of files and you really want to do a lot more advanced management of the contents of what's living on your server. So go ahead and subscribe uh, to our videos. We've got this as a part of a larger playlist. If you haven't been tuning into the others, I highly encourage you to check those out, and we'll see you next time.